Before we get going, a couple things. First, I'm teaming with Cowbell Kingdom for a jersey giveaway. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel and Cowbell Kingdoms and follow some directions. The details will be in the description. Also, we're doing a countdown to the draft with an awesome podcast called Open Run. Subscribe to them on iTunes and look for our pod in the next few days. Thanks. Michael Porter Jr. is a lean and long, silky shooting hybrid forward from Columbia, Missouri that saw his lone year of college basketball go essentially entirely unfulfilled this past year at the University of Missouri under Conzo Martin. Porter was originally committed to Washington, where his dad had coached under Lorenzo Romar. Romar lost his job, so Michael's dad did as well, and his dad would eventually end up at, you guessed it, Missouri. So Michael did too. That's a nice bullet point on a resume for a dad coach who's job hunting i'm just saying porter is an intriguing cross-section of size and offensive ability he's almost built like a wing that was put on a stretcher and stretched out he's an impressive six foot 11 and he weighs 210 pounds with a seven foot wingspan and a nine foot standing reach he's definitely a slender guy for his size but he's got a frame that could likely add more muscle because i do think that he added some while he was at missouri he was widely considered to be the number one or number two player in his class for the duration of his high school career Career, and he was one of the most dominant scores in his age group. He also loves the ladies. Hey girl, I want you to know. A huge obstacle in evaluating Michael Porter Jr. is that he might be one of the highest profile American players that I can remember that has had so little meaningful game footage to lean on. He only played in two games that counted for Missouri this past year after being forced to have a micro discectomy to repair herniated discs in his L3 and L4 vertebrae. That didn't quite get your attention. This dude had spine surgery at 19 years old. Even more troubling, there was no triggering or injury-centered event that caused this condition in Porter that we know of. I'll shock everyone and say that I'm not a doctor. Pick yourself up off the floor, I'm sorry about that. But from my mild research, the causes of herniated discs are as follows hereditary, old age, or harmful body mechanics that create an improper load on the lumbar, lower back. Hey, he could also just need a new desk chair. Attempting to get a read on Porter, this leaves us in a tough predicament, and we also lose pretty much any meaningful statistics against good competition. So any of the synergy says this, blah, 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 blah stuff that we like to parrot at this time of the year, that stuff's all out the window. Basically, all of Michael Porter's basketball footage in the last two years has some kind of asterisk next to it. We have no choice but to trust our eyes and our basketball acumen and go full eye test mode. Michael Porter Jr. is a born scorer. I wouldn't call him a pure shooter, but he shoots it well out to NBA range and he gets excellent elevation and extension on his release. He also has a high release point, so with his size, contesting his shot can be difficult if he has you off balance. He's what I call a tuxedo scorer. His first instinct seems to be to go above the fray and use that jump shot. In some ways, Michael Porter reminds me of a 6'11 version of Malik Monk, if I'm being honest. Porter has a skill that a lot of high-level bucket getters have, and that's the ability to create his jump shot consistently from just about anywhere on the floor in any situation. Off a couple dribbles facing up, stepping back, with a defender on his back from just about anywhere, off screen actions, ripping through to the left or to the right in the pick and roll, Michael Porter can get his jump shot. And he's a supremely impressive, mobile and coordinated athlete for a guy his size. His length, speed and technique shooting the ball in this sense are very rare and difficult to defend. Some great scoring wings throughout time have had this skill in their bag. It's one of those shoulder shrug offensive weapons that can be extremely frustrating for even the best defenders because the truly great ones sometimes don't even have to dribble to get it. This is a sharp, sharp tool that Michael has at his disposal when things break down and you just need someone to hit a shot. Even if he only gets marginally better at this, he'll probably be able to get this shot going forward. And that's the type of thing that playoff teams like to have. 
Michael is different than Kevin Knox in that he does not have a deferring bone in his body. He's clearly wired like a scorer, wired to be a leader, and he hunts his shot constantly and thrives on asserting himself. I get him used because you can tell that Michael's one of those guys who sees his offensive ability as the best option in basically any situation. This can be problematic though. Michael's charming, irrational confidence can cause him to overextend himself. For such a talented scorer, he often lacks situational awareness on the offensive end and gets himself into trouble off the dribble trying to force the issue. He's prone to questionable shot selection and to this point in his career hasn't really had much care for time or score intensive moments. He's also not the most nimble or creative scorer around the rim, but he's a good athlete and he catches lobs well. I've heard people claim that Porter quote unquote handles it like a guard and I have some strong skepticism about that. Michael's handle is wildly vulnerable when he's trying to create in transition or pass more than a couple dribbles. His lack of a real explosive first step gets him in a lot of let's see what happens, whoops, turned it over immediately type situations. That handle can get as vulnerable as a bon Iver record in a hurry. Michael is a capable passer when he's not on the move, and he actually does find dropping in entry passes and doing things within the offense. But once he starts to move, I definitely get the sense that his shakiness handling the ball in traffic takes up so much of his bandwidth that his playmaking is compromised. This makes me wonder if NBA defenders will just crowd him and challenge those two areas that need improvement. I haven't really seen any back to the basket game to speak of other than those fadeaways or turnaround jumpers, and he could stand to really embrace the physicality more in his game. This is the part of the Michael Porter Jr. discussion that worries me, his posture on the court. I'm not sure if this has any connection to his back issues, but Michael plays very upright for a majority of the time. Part of me wonders if he was having back problems for a while and it affected how he played. He runs well and he's a phenomenally fluid player for somebody his size, but there's something not quite right about his posture. Michael seems to not only struggle to get low in a defensive stance, he struggles to consistently get low and wide in pretty much all facets of the game. Part of this is that he's 6'11", and his perimeter skills put him in compromising situations with more mobile players. But I worry that it's more than that. He dribbles high, finds himself standing straight up and when shots go up, which makes him easier to block out, finds himself too upright in on-ball defensive situations. For this reason, I think it'd be wise for Porter Jr. to put on weight and gain the ability to battle fours in the NBA than to lean towards being a guy that primarily guards wings. So we've got a 19-year-old 6'11 kid that likes to play on the perimeter, just had back surgery for something that didn't seem to involve a singular event or injury, and some of the weak spots in his game involve him getting more nimble laterally? Ugh, it very well could be fine, but that is troubling to me. I'd be shocked if every aspect of Michael Porter Jr.'s movement and body mechanics aren't currently under total scrutiny. Does this mean that his problem will go away? Will the threat of further complication hinder our chance at seeing maximum Michael Porter Jr.? Here's some examples of athletes who have had back problems in professional sports in the last 25 years. Many of these guys had to have an additional surgery a short time later. And Porter is about 10 years younger than each of these players were when they had their surgery. It's a major, major concern, no doubt about it. You guys can let me know in the comments or on Twitter, but what's the precedent for someone to bounce back from this type of a problem? The reality here is that Porter Porter Jr.'s combination of size, coordination, and offensive talent are rare, and for him to slip past five in this draft would be a remarkable steal, albeit a gamble, for someone picking in that range. You might be stealing an all-star. He might get in the world of NBA medicine and training and discover things about his body mechanics that are correctable, and then we might get to see him move forward with his NBA career. Like I said before, I'm not in the medical field, I have no idea, I'm speculating just like you. In a mode where we're normally guessing anyway about the future of a player, we're done doubly guessing because we haven't seen Michael Porter play basketball consistently as an adult yet. It's also partially possible that if Michael Porter Jr. isn't working out for anyone and being secretive, this might be a case of us drafting him on what his reputation is and what he's been in the past. It might be what it was like to cast Mickey Rourke in a movie in 2002. You might get a legend and you might get something weird. I, we just used to like hold each other. Would I draft Porter in the top five? I would lean towards no, but I think that you'd be short-sighted to write him off. Put it this way, if he's healthy, at the bare minimum, I think Michael Porter Jr. is a high-level specialist in the NBA. Honestly, if he's healthy, I'd be shocked if he didn't wildly exceed that. 
His hoops IQ is just too high, his scoring ability too exceptional, and his potential as a versatile defender is just too remarkable to wither away in the grind of the NBA. His ceiling is extremely high, somewhere in the range of all NBA, in my opinion. If he's not healthy, it's difficult to imagine those things fully coming to fruition. It's a fascinating quandary and a decision that I'm glad I don't have to make, and I'm sure it's keeping a lot of NBA executives up at night. You never like to see anyone robbed of their future, and I'm really hoping that we get to see Michael Porter Jr. pursue his. Let me know if you agree. Hey folks, I appreciate you watching, and if you like this video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at at jkyleman. Say hey!